Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the top three new features in Photoshop CC 2015. These are the top three features that I think will be valuable to you as artists. So the first one is quick export. Traditionally in the past, if I had something like this that was a document that had several groups of layers, you can see within this group, there's my hand and my text and my artwork and so on. This is something that I would use to build thumbnails for my YouTube channel. So in older versions of Photoshop, the way I'd have to export all of these is hide the ones I don't want to show. Then I'd have to go to File, and then either Save As or Save for Web. But you'll notice in this version of Photoshop, we no longer have Save for Web. We have Export, Save for Web Legacy if you want to use that, or you have Export As or Quick Export. Now, you can choose Export Preferences and you can set quick export to be a PNG or a JPEG or anything that you want here. Most of the time I export things as PNG, a lot of the times I have transparency, so that's gonna be my default. And if I wanna export something really fast, I just go to File, Export, Quick Export. It's gonna put it right inside of the folder where I want it, so let's go ahead and find that. Let's just throw it in here. We'll go to Save, and it's automatically gonna throw that into a folder. If I bring that folder over, you can see there it is. Now, if I want to export a bunch of different layers or even a bunch of different groups, I can just select all of these groups here. Let's make sure that they're all turned on. And then I can right click on these layers and I can go to quick export as PNG, pick the folder where I want to put them. And then if we open up that folder, you can see that it added all of those layers. It gave them the name of the layer itself. So if you wanted them to have a specific name, you could of course name those layers before you export them. So that is a huge time-saving feature. Let's take a look at the next new feature, which is adding grain to blur effects. So let's say that this is a photo here, even though we know it's not, it's a picture of an eagle. But if this were a photograph, it would have at least some grain in it. And the grain is these little speckles that you see of different colors. So if I go to apply a blur effect from the filter blur gallery menu, like iris blur, for instance, I can, of course, draw the focus in towards the center of the subject by moving the blur centered on the area that I want to put in focus, and everything else will get blurry as we move away from that point. So let's just put a really strong blur on this, and we'll click OK. And you can see that did a great job, except now we had all this nice green, but then where it starts to get blurry, it's all blurry and not grainy anymore, and it doesn't look as realistic that way. So I'm going to do an undo. Let's go to Filter. Blur Gallery, Iris Blur. Let's apply that same blur, but this time let's take a look at this new palette over here on the right for noise. We can add grain now, and if we bump this up, we can get it to a point to where we match the grain that we have there. We can change the size of the grain, of course. I think that's a pretty decent match. I'm gonna click on OK. And now if we zoom in, you can see that there's that nice blur. However, it also has the grain which helps it look more realistic. So that's a really cool effect for photographers and for artists who like to use grain on their artwork. I'll do that sometimes if I want kind of a vintage or aged effect. And finally, the last new feature that we'll look at is something that I've been wanting for a long time, and that is the ability to add multiple effects. So for instance, if we add an effect for a stroke to our text that says a button here, We've always been able to do that with layer effects, but now if we click this plus, we can add more than one of each kind of style. So we can add multiple strokes, just like we would do in something like Illustrator. And we can also change the position of those multiple strokes. So we could have one stroke inside and one stroke outside. Now you can get some pretty cool effects here. So we could do that also with this button that's underneath. If we go to this rounded rectangle layer, we can add an effect. Let's add a stroke to that. Let's put this one inside. Let's make it kind of brighter. Let's add another stroke to the outside. Let's make that darker. And then you can see that those multiple strokes show up here in the layers palette as well, so you can preview them on and off. This is a really awesome feature. I'm really glad they added this because this is gonna make my life a lot easier when I'm doing designs and layouts in Photoshop. So anyways, if you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you appreciate all these free Photoshop tutorials I'm making, go on over to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten and make a donation to help me continue making videos like this possible. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday for another Photoshop tutorial.